get code. So, are you able to see my screen? Presentation PPT? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you. So, why we are writing the unit test cases? So, these people have so many confusion that why should we write a unit test cases? It's a task, task of the testing team. No, the testing people are writing the test cases and doing the testing. That is the functional testing or uh, black box testing or white box testing. We are writing the unit test cases to test the internal of our code functionality. And why the name unit test, a small piece of code we are testing and then we are writing the code. So in test driven development, we are writing first the test cases and then we are writing the code. Though initially it takes much more time, but if you check overall the period from software development, testing again, uh, we are getting the feedback from the testing. We are fixing the bug and again we are deploying again the people are testing and then again it goes to the staging, then UAT and production. So the time between this whole end-to-end -end software cycle, if we calculate it, so it is much more than test-driven development. So people say that in test-driven development, when we are writing the unit test cases, initially it takes so much more time. But in future steps in a UAT production, staging, and a testing cycle, we are reducing the number of picks, read a number of bugs, reducing the testing time. And uh, when we get the feedback, again, we are deploying the so many times. So we are saving much more time to getting the feedback. Again, uh, we are uh, fixing the bug. Then again, we are solving the problems. Then again, deploying, again, testing, people are testing. So we are giving the more uh, stress, uh, more time on writing the unit test cases. Again, not only the writing the unit test cases, that unit test cases should cover the functionality. It should cover the code. Just writing the unit test cases is not the solution. So that unit test cases should cover the code. So the code coverage is 100% depends on how much percentage of unit test cases you are writing. And unit test cases are writing means how much functionality you are covering by writing the unit test cases. So unit test case is nothing but a isolated component of a software application. Now, before going to the unit test cases, we have gone through the why unit testing. So the purpose of the unit testing is to test the correctness of isolated code. A unit component is an individual function or code of the application. And a unit is a single testable part of a software system. That may be the function, that may be the uh, big service, or that may be the small uh, use case for uh, uh, login logout. So these test cases should be tested. And so many times when we are writing the unit test cases, we do not have the data. That time you can use the fake data, or you can use the mock framework. At the end of uh, the session, I will cover what is the uh, fake data, now how to create a fake data using the mock framework. Now there are three types of testing is there. EMS test, that is the Visual Studio test. This you are already available with Visual Studio out of the box in your uh, uh, integrated development environment without doing anything. Now, second is the N unit test. Is a testing framework for .NET framework. Before .NET Core, there is a framework .NET 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. We were using the N unit framework. The purpose of the N unit framework and the X unit framework is same. Both are writing the test cases. And there is a much more advanced version in X unit framework. So N unit framework, entire application is isolated into diverse model. This model is tested independently to ensure that the objective is made. But this N unit doesn't integrate into Visual Studio the way the MS test does. And third one is the X unit framework. So this X unit framework have one upper hand over the N unit framework. And this comes with the 
dotnet code so this x unit framework is a open source test framework and this is the extensible and flexible in comparison to the n unit framework and traditionally a few few different types of automated tests are available uh, in x unit framework and uh, Uh, like the extension means uh, we can pass the data to the unit test case. We can uh, use the same unit test case method for writing the or for testing the multiple scenarios. So this is the advantage of X unit framework. First, it is the open source. Second is the extensible. Third one is the flexible. Fourth is we can pass the data to the unit test. And the last one is with the single one unit test method, we can test multiple scenarios. I will cover with the help of the theory attribute. Now there is a testing pyramid is there. So generally there is a unit test is there at the bottom, then integration test and the last one is the e test. So the e test means end to end testing. This testing is generally covered by the QA team or you can say the testing team. Now in learning mode, we are using the Selenium or Catalan, uh, Catalan uh, tool for automation of testing. Some people in other organizations are writing the scripting uh, in a script file in Python and uh, doing the automation of the unit test cases. Previously, there was a load runner and win runner. We used to write the test cases in Excel file and give that Excel file as the input to the load runner or win runner uh, tool to automate the testing. So doing the automation of the testing, we are reducing the time. If there is a big project, it used to take nearly one day, two days, three days for testing the whole software. By doing the automation, we are able to do the testing in one hour, two hours. Because the same scenarios are there. Now, already those scenarios are documented in scripting file with the positive scenarios as well as the negative scenarios. When any code changes, we are executing the test cases in the pipeline and it gives the feedback within one hour, two hours. Depends on the size of the project, depends on the functionality and the number of test cases the user have written. So this is e 2 test generally covered by the uh, functional test Selenium Catalan uh, uh, by the testing team or QA team. So the integration test, what do you mean by the integration test? Integration is done before deploying the software into the testing or uh, staging development. Integration test is nothing but suppose you are uh, database that database is hosted on cloud that may be the aws cloud azure cloud or google cloud so this database is inside the rds and that rds connectivity you have to know before executing the any of the test cases so integration test is what we are testing the connectivity from our app to the rds which is hosted rds database which is hosted on the cloud or on premises if that connectivity is successfully passed, our integration test pass. This is the one scenario. Another scenario is you have the containers and you are um, uh, unit test cases you are executing in the container. So the connect connectivity between the container and your pipeline also need to be tested. This is the integration test. Third scenario is we have the files like our uh, certificate, mark set, expense uh, certificate, relieving letters, our PAN card, Aadhaar card when we are joining the organizations. So these documents we are storing on some other database, a file storage database or file server. So we have to do the testing. Yes, we have the connectivity that file server because if we do not have the connectivity, how we will view those files, how, we, how any end users will download these files. So we have to write the test case and this is the integration test case. And the third one is if you have third party APIs that are hosted on some other places or if you have uh, any other uh, services or any other data or content which are stored in S3 bucket on AWS cloud or blob storage in uh, Google blob storage on Azure cloud or cloud storage files which are stored in the Google cloud, how you will download those files or upload the your individual files or project files into the cloud storage. So for that also you have to test the connectivity 
and this connectivity is nothing but the integration test. There are so many scenarios of integrations. So are, these are the integration uh, integration test scenarios. And uh, last one is inside the project there are multiple models are there, multiple components are there. People are working on different components. When we are giving to the for the testing the whole life cycle, then we have to integrate the solution. That time also we are writing the integration test cases. So one is the um, withdrawal model, or you can say that you are uh, uh, doing the uh, withdrawal amount from the blank. But at the same time, in the ATM machines, you are using your uh, pin uh, ATM card and pin number. So it is validated. Then it allows you for the withdrawal of the amount. If you have the sufficient uh, balance in your fund or in your account, it will check if the balance is sufficient, then it will allow to withdraw. So these are the pre-test cases before executing the final uh, test cases. So for this, we are writing the unit test cases. Now, in a unit test cases in learning mate, we are covering mostly are writing the unit test cases for the web APIs. Whatever I have told, have you understood what is the unit test cases, what are the integration test cases, and what are the EQA testing? Anyone have a question? Anyone have doubt? Janashri, Adiba, Jayashri, Madhuri. Saili, Akash, Akash, both Akash, huh? Akash C and Akash P. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Adiba, tell me. Uh, I just wanted to know that unit test cases are used as a developer. No, they're not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not these, are, the tester. these are the developers. Developer will write the unit test cases. I will show you in this. Now I'm going to show you in code how to write the unit test cases. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm opening the solution. See, I have the two projects. The first project is the .NET Core unit test. So unit test cases, we can write on the MVC controller as well as on web API services. But in learning mate, we are not writing on the MVC controllers because we are not using the MVC pages as a front end. We are using the MVC, we are using the Angular or ReactJS pages as a front end. So we are writing on the web API because in learning mate, .NET core is basically for the back end. In web API, we are writing the services. We are connecting the web API with the entity framework. The entity framework in some projects connecting with the repository layer is there and that repository layer is connected to the between the entity framework and database. Database is mapped with the entity framework. Generally, we are using the database first approach. And between this uh, entity framework and our web API, we are using the repository. Mostly, we are using the web API services, the entity framework. And inside the entity framework, there may be the below MySQL, SQL Server. Uh, in some projects, we are using the PostgreSQL database on cloud. And in some project with the AWS cloud, we are using the DynamoDB. And in some projects, we are using the uh, non-RDBS, uh, non-relational database. We can say the NoSQL database that may be the MongoDB or Cloud SQL in Google Cloud. So we are using the Web API as a backend. And the front-end people are consuming the data. There are some full stack people are there. They are consuming the Web API and writing the front end code in Angular or as well as in ReactJS. Some people are aware of both. Some people are only writing the back end code, and some people are learning the front end technology, Angular and React, and they are going to become the full stack developer. So, here I have the one project, uh, .NET Core Unit Test. In this project, I have created the contract, controller, and model folder. So, and one is the service folder. In service folder, I have the shopping cart service. So this is the service. And in this service, uh, we have the method 
shopping item add get all items get by id and remove by id and for this we have for this service we have the interface i shopping cart service so this interface is the boilerplate of the methods just the declaration of the methods these methods are implemented into the service so for that we have created the service and this service we have implemented in another project so that testing project so then we have the controller and we have the model in model folder we have the shopping atom in model folder it is nothing but you can say the dto uh, data type objects so this shopping atom has the guid the atom name price and manufacturer this shopping atom class or you can say the model we will use in the controller and in service so here we are giving in controller we are giving the uh, namespace or we are using the model and contracts both we are using contracts is nothing but the interface we are using and the, we are using the model also and controller also now here controller this is the web api method I, and all you are aware of writing the web api the first attribute we have decorated with the api and controller and this is the api controller and here this is the control by a controller based class because in controller based class so many methods have defined even they have defined the injection outside so this is the shopping cart controller web api we are here defining the constructor and in constructor we are passing the i shopping cart service interface and this interface is defined into the contract folder see the namespace interface dot net core unit test dot contacts this interface we have created into the contract folder and here with the service we are initializing here this interface inside the constructor and this is nothing but we are injecting the service inside the controller and this is the dependency injection so before dotnet core web api when we create a dependency injection we have to create a, a container and inside the global.asx.cs file we used to register this interface to map this service or interface with a container but in dotnet core dependency injection is built in only we have to pass this service and if you want to add any services or methods then we have to define into the startup.cs so in startup.cs in startup.cs there are the two methods are there how many knows a uh, uh, .NET Core I think all you are aware of .NET Core hello yes sir. yes okay so in .NET Core there are two methods one is the uh, and these two methods are defined in startup class one is the configure service and Config another is the configure method yes so this is the provider i configuration and in configure service we are configuring the services here if you want to configure any other service just give the namespace here and here you can configure your services here you can configure the default services also like uh add a memory cache add singleton add anti forgery token add authentications these are the services we are configuring in startup.cs in configure services so in dotnet core no need to create a container this is the built-in the dotnet core framework have configure the container otherwise we have to configure the unit container any unit container unity container or before that unity container people used to create a structure map or auto map artifact container to map the services and to inject the object but now in dotnet core we have the facility just map the services here this is the configure service to map the services and below that configure services here is the configure method what is the purpose of configure method this configure method is to configure 
into the yeah. middleware into the HTTP pipeline. Now, what are the middlewares? Do you know dot before dot net core there was a dot net 2.0 3.0 in that pipeline there was HTTP models and HTTP handlers. So HTTP models and HTTP handlers we can create a custom HTTP model and HTTP handlers to intersect into the HTTP pipeline. So the middleware we are doing the same thing to <coughs> intersect into the HTTP pipeline. So the purpose is same. So with the help of the middleware, we can do the so many things. And these middlewares we are configuring here in configure methods. So here routing, HTTPS redirection, authorization, and developer exception page have mapped in configure method. And these are the built-in middlewares in .NET Core. If you go and see here, you will get some built-in middlewares. You can create your custom middleware. Suppose you have to handle the global errors. When you are handling the errors, what you are doing? You are writing the try test log in your WebAPS service. Sometimes you have to find out or you have to catch the global level error. That may happen every service or if you have the project in that project, they have the uh, customer have given some functionalities or some business rules. So for that, every web API, every method, you will not try, uh, you will not write a, uh, that functionalities to handle the errors. You will write a try catch. Okay. But apart from try catch, you want to handle that every action methods in every web API, then we can write a middleware and configure that middleware on global level. So you can handle the errors globally. This is the number one thing. Another is if you have to find out your web API is there, you hit, hit the web API with your tokens and you have to find out the performance, how much time your web API request is taking. Sometimes it is taking too much time. So you have to calculate the response time. Why we are calculating the response time? To find out the performance. We have to find out the performance which web API is performing well, which web API is doing it in minimum milliseconds. So for that also you can write a middleware and you can configure that middleware here. So the purpose of the middleware by handle the global errors, by handling the some business rules, uh, as well as by creating the custom middleware, you can handle the response time also. So there are so many use cases we can use to create a custom middleware. Now this is the startup.cs file. Now I'm coming back to the our unit test cases. Now we have the shopping cart controller here. In shopping cart controller, we have the methods. Get method. It's a simple method to get all the items. And then we have get method by the ID passing the ID. Then we have the get method by passing the we have the post method to create a atom inside our database or in our link list so we are passing the parameter from body and we are passing the object shopping atom already we have created the shopping atom object and we are passing here and we are adding to the into the list or whatever the database is there so this is the post method we are passing the from body parameter and last one is the remove method so, so we have the four methods we have in controllers. Now, how to write the unit test cases for this shopping cart controller? For that, you have to create a new project. And new project, I have created the Web API test project. So, in this Web API test project, there is a dependency. In you know, I have given the dependency to the project. Are you able to see this, this is a project inside the web API test and here is the .NET Core unit test project. Or if you want to uh, see what you can do, you can go here, create a
new project i can create here on the left hand side here is a ex unit test project is there so we are uh, selecting the ex unit test project then uh, we are selecting the uh, here also the old version is also available en unit test project is there we are selecting the ex unit test project and then we are selecting here ex unit test project so this unit test case project we can write for ms test project for dotnet core for old version also unit test cases project for the android application mobile application and this is for web driver for a uh, web driver test for a uh, unit test project also we can write ms test project for the old version we are selecting here the ex unit test project for dotnet core then we are selecting just a minute eh? Yeah. Yeah, please can call. I'm in meeting. Can you call me after video? Okay. So I am creating creating the new project, and this is the test project, and I am giving the name uh, sample test. Sample test project. So and this project will go in inside the folder. The location is there. We are creating the new solution. and we are create, selecting the create test project so here i actually is going to create a new so here we are getting here i have the web api test project here uh, i have given the dependency of the unit test project and uh, giving the unit test project uh, i have to give the some references so one reference is the dotnet core unit test project that automatically will give the access to the your main core project this is the core project where we are writing our web apis or you are writing your mvc controller applications so we are creating the another controller here now i have created the shopping cart controller you can create here your own controller suppose i am creating here a new controller new atom i am giving here sample card controller and i am adding it here now this class should be public okay here i am giving the name spaces of the project using dotnet core unit test sometimes this uh, namespace you will not get uh, immediately for that you have to build the solution because we have given the reference to the project so here i will give the contacts number 1 again i will use here the uh, same namespace to refer give the reference to the models also models Okay. here this is my sample card controller so here what i will do i will do the three things here the first thing is the arrange arrange the first thing is the arrange because in unit test there are the three things are there one is the arrange second is the uh, yak and third one is the yeah 
as such. These are the three A's. Three A's for the unit test. Uh, unit test. Three A's. So these are the three A's. Arrange, yak, and assert. So we have to here. First, we have to arrange the things here. So to arrange the things, what we will do here? We will first initialize. We have to make the arrangement. So here we will do the initialization. Now after the initialization, we will do writing the unit test case method. So private read only read only I shopping cart service equals to underscore service and after that again we have to define the private read only shopping cart controller i'm getting the next case shopping cart controller I will resolve this and by using the namespace, I have resolved this one. Now here in uh, shopping cart controller, the sample cart controller, we will give the name here. Uh, this is the test controller. And here we have to make the initialization in public sample cart controller. Here, here, what I will do? underscore service equals to new shopping cart service new shopping cart service page we are uh, here initializing I will tell you about this uh, shopping cart service plate and then we have to here controller controller equals to new shopping cart controller and here as a dependency we will pass this service. What we have done we have done the uh, first A, this is the arrange. So what we have done, we are here. We have initialized, uh, declare the service, a uh, shopping cart service, then controller, and inside the constructor, this public constructor, we have done the initialization of the shopping cart service and shopping cart controller. Now, what is the shopping cart service pick? So here. We are not connecting to the database directly for this project. So what we are doing here, our shopping cart service, which I have shown you in the main .NET Core project. If you go and see into the go, go to definition, this is in the main .NET Core project. See namespace .NET Core unit test project. We have defined this our shopping cart service. Now to test the data, either you should have the data or you should have the fake data by using the uh, mock framework for mocking the data or you have to create a data. So for that purpose to write a unit test cases and to validate the unit test cases, you should have something data. It should be in memory data or you should have in array list or in database. If you are going to test the database, every time you have to run the instance. Or you should have any service 
from where we can read the data. So this is the shopping cart service and I have implemented this shopping cart service here in our test project. This is my test project. In this test project, I have implemented the shopping cart service. Now I have given the name, the fake data, shopping cart service fake. And this service, I have implemented the I shopping cart service. For that, I have created the list of atom. List of atom. Actually, it's a list of class shopping atom. So, and here we are assigning the some atoms. And here we are assigning the atoms, new shopping atoms. And we are created the three rows and we are inserting into the shopping cart list. In .NET Core and .NET 3.5 onwards, we can initialize the atoms and insert into the list in this way. New shopping atom and in a one single row, we can do it. Before that in .NET 1.0 and 2.0, how we have to do it? We have to create a object of this and insert the every uh, atoms by initializing. Like, like uh, we have to create a here shopping atom. SH equals to new shopping atom. And then SH dot Here we have to add the atoms like ID, name, name of the atom. So we have to write one by one and initialize. And then lastly, we have to uh, insert into the list. So in .NET Core, we don't require to initialize one by one. We can in a single line, we can add this one, uh, one row complete atom, ID, name, manufacturer in a price and give the comma. Don't go outside again. You can add uh, another row, another data into the list. This is the initialization happen after .NET Core, uh, .NET 3.5 and in .NET Core. So this is the shopping atom list I have created and I have implemented get all atoms, return new shopping cart. This complete shopping cart we are returning because we are not passing any input ID that this month, this is the input ID and I want a data. So another one is the we are adding the atom new atom dot id shopping cart add new atom so we are adding the new atoms to the shopping atom list so and we are getting the atoms by id get by id then this is the remove atom. now these are the methods we have implemented to get the data in shopping cart service fake data so in sample cart controller here I have done the first arrange A. Now I have the complete arrangement, initialization of the controller, initialization of the service, declaration of the service, and here initialization here. Now the next method is I am going to write a method. Suppose I am writing a method, the first method. I'm going, going to write a method, you can say public public void uh, get all atoms Here, what I will do variable okay, okay result plus two. Here, I will call the method on controller. So, already we have defined the initialize the controller. So, controller dot get we have the get method. So, we are calling the get method. Sometimes you will not able to get this method. That time you have to 
rebuild the solution. And lastly, we have to assert this is act. We are doing the act. So this is the act variable OK result. This is the act. The second second A. This is the out of three A. First one is the one A. Now this is the second A. And third one is the assert. So in assert, what we are doing? Assert dot is type. So we are not getting here the intelligence. Why? We have given the references to the contracts controller model and services. Here we are passing the services in dependency in the injection. Here we are initializing the services, but we have not given the reference to our EX unit project. So using EX unit framework, we are doing this using the X unit framework. So if you are using the uh, dot net 1.0 to 3.0 you will be able to get the en unit instead of a x unit now here i will get the is type now this method we have written but still we are getting here the references also we are required for this uh, okay result as Okay, object result. So again, one more uh, reference we need to use uh, for the EMVC framework also using Microsoft dot ESP net net four. Here you will get the ESP as well as ESP net core, but we are using the dot net core. So ESP net core and we have to give the framework name. Now this uh, method we have written here, the get all atoms. So this method, this method, is a simple method. This method will not execute when we are executing, uh, when we are executing the This method is the simple method. It will not uh, take part when we execute the uh, test cases. Why? Because we have not given the attribute to this method or as a test method. So, one minute here. We require obey. Okay. Okay. Object result. Okay. So we have to decorate this method with the app attribute. So now this is the unit test case method. We are testing our controller gate method here by writing the gate all atoms method in our test project. So we can now test our project by executing the by executing our test project. For time being, I am here shopping cart controller test. I will uh, exclude. Now I will build the solution. I'm building the solution. I wrote one unit test case for the gate method of the shopping cart controller. I have created the fake data service, sample card fake data, and that service I'm using here to pass the fake data to test my the unit test cases. Now solution is built. Now, how to execute the test cases? There are two ways to use the execution of the test cases. One is by using the test analyze Okay. Solution is building. Build uh, succeeded. Now we will run the test cases. Here you will get, get the option repeat last run, debug last run, 
and this is the test explorer so in test explorer you open the test explorer and run the test cases see this is the sample card controller now we wrote a get all atoms method here our test cases will show there are the five methods how many executed in how many test cases pass when there is a green it shows the green symbol that your test case passed successfully when your test case fail it shows your test cases fail now coming again to the solution explorer and we will check i our get all atoms method are not executed successfully We are given the fact attribute also and shopping cart controller. Public class. Shopping cart controller. We the public class. Another way to uh, execute the use cases is by the command from from command prompt also i will show how to execute the test cases let me here solution explorer the solution one more time i'm building the solution now so uh, did you got the idea that how to uh, write a test case for the your web api controller hello yes sir yes sir yeah yes sir so Test. See now our get all atoms. Where we have, we wrote this uh, unit test cases in sample card controller line twenty seven. This test case passed successfully. So. I will show the another one also, another way also. So I will uh, add one class. Means already there is a shopping cart controller is there. Another one. I will just include. This is the shopping cart controller. I am including in project, uh, building the solution. Okay, now I when I run this project, we, uh, when your build is going on here, the run all test option will not visible because at the bottom the build is succeeded, but after few seconds you will be able to see this. Uh, now you will be able to see the run all test. Now here, see I have the thirteen test cases. So one for we wrote for uh, sample card controller and other for this shopping cart controller so these are the execution of the test cases now what i will do i will show you how the test cases fail and when the test cases fail it will make red here now how you will know your test cases fail so i am going into the shopping cart controller in shopping cart controller i am doing here shopping cart controller test i am checking here see for one test in shopping cart controller there is a one get method is there shopping cart controller it returns all the data now for the single method we can write the multiple unit test cases here we have wrote 
another method we are uh, telling to the controller that react on controller call the get method then in variable atoms we are getting all the data and in assert here we are testing the another one thing see the atom drop count we are expecting the three rows because we have inserted the three atoms or three rows into the shopping cart list so we are expecting the result of three and the atoms dot count mean the actual result this expected result when expected result and actual result matches then your test case pass so now our test case is passing but when i am going to make here the two so the actual result is three and we are expecting the two so our test case will fail on the right hand side it shows the summary in a group how many test are there see when call return all atoms here our test case fail because see shopping dot card we expected two but actual how many data we are getting three so message is that asset dot equal failure our test case fail so sometimes we are expecting that suppose you are writing the use case for authentication so you are uh, written the use pass the username and login id it goes to the identity server and you are getting the authorization rules means how much permission you are you have the permission of yard edit delete put post so you are expecting the five but how much you are getting you can test with the help of the test method so with the help of the test methods we can check here so we are check here that the atoms dot count is three because in fake service we are in fake service we have created the three atoms one two and three in a and we are expecting actual data is three atoms returning we are expecting the two if you go here again and if you change here four again it will fail because we are expecting four the actual count is three our data will fail so our unit test case will fail so this is the way to run and execute the unit test case here see this is the gate method here is also the gate method the difference here here is we are testing only that we are getting the data or not yes we are getting the data our test is passed here we are telling to the controller telling to the uh, testing framework that they are expecting the three rows the actual how much getting if we are getting the three atoms the test case will pass if you are getting the four atoms the test case will fail means a single method of the controller shopping cart controller this get method we are writing the two unit test cases so at least you write a single unit test cases so your code core is will really improve now the another way i will show you how to run the unit test cases with the help of the command prompt so here is the command prompt in command prompt you have to go and you have to execute the batch method so this is the batch method dot net test collect cover as true and p cover let output for format cobertura so this format it shows in the square box see here so these are the warnings i am getting because uh, already i have the dotnet 5.0 i have created this project in 3.1 so that some uh, dls uh, warning it is given it's not a error it's a warning for the uh code analysis for code analyzer we are getting here the message the starting the test execution see here we have passed uh, we have uh, made the changes but we have not built the solution so one test case failed and that test case is the yasser dot equal so we will correct it already i think we have corrected here but we have not made the changes we will build the solution 
and then again we will run it i have to show you the code coverage also so here also we will get the message the how many test cases passed and how many test cases failed now how how the uh, how much time it uh, takes to execute the test cases but if your all the test cases pass then it will show the code coverage see our total number of test cases are 13 past 13 how much time it takes to execute and here it is the code coverage so how much percentage we have done the code coverage see we have the 50% uh, line we have covered branch 55% and methods how many methods we wrote a uh, test cases though we have get get all methods post method remove methods get by id methods but we wrote only two methods so it is showing that 40% we have covered the code coverage so this code coverage it shows line by line branch wise and method wise and this code coverage it is more important when you are writing the web api writing the test cases and you are all developers project code merge into one place and then we are running the sonar cube and then sonar cube test how many percentage of code coverage is there and that code coverage requires the client to the technical architect or to the solution people because how the code quality is means how we are considering our business rules functionality and we are writing the code to test the small piece of code there is a already i think our time ended uh there is a one more good thing is uh, uh, there and I, i have to cover that so quickly i have covered it <coughs> so here we have another uh, scenario is here that is <coughs> the attribute is there and uh, we are writing now we wrote the fact attribute the unit test should be decorated with the fact attribute but now here i am writing <coughs> the theory attribute why theory attribute because see this is the account number validation method is here so in account number i am testing the four digit i am testing the uh, two digit also first four digit first two digit here i am testing the first two digit but what happens here these are the four digit remaining digit and last two digits are there i have to check before i open there should be the four digit after i open this number of digit and lastly at the end there should be two digits so for each for each scenario one two three scenario i have to write a three test cases but due to this theory attribute i am writing only the one method and in one method i am telling this method i am passing the data this data this data i will test the first four digit this data will test the first two digit so scenario is different but with only one single method we can test the whole two scenarios you can add many multiple scenarios also you can write the third scenarios for this middle number also means if you have the multiple scenarios there you have the data so you can pass the data to this method inline data you can pass the multiple scenarios and you will not require the fact attribute here above is the fact attribute but here it will be the theory attribute theory attribute tells to the testing method that we are passing the data to the test method as well as we are passing the multiple scenarios and one test method will test the multiple scenarios so i will show you how it will test now here see there is a only one method is there each valid account number is valid account number is there see is is valid account number is there see but it executes three times the first one is the is valid account number returns true so 
is valid account returns number to one time and this method have executed two times a single method executed two times because we are passing the two scenarios in line data so here you can say one and this method executed two times a single method executed two times to to test the two scenarios from the one method for that we are using the theory attribute this theory attribute means it is nothing but the extension to the fact attribute and it was not available in uh, .NET before .NET Core. Here see this method is valid account number first part it executed two times. See returns account number it executed two times first time and second time two times. So this is the importance of the theory attribute. So this is from my end actually already we are going beyond the schedule there are so many things i have to tell uh, but i will cover in the another session uh, not for the unit test cases we are going to in the on the 14th or 15th uh, march we are trying to sc uh, schedule a .NET core training for all your people those are interested with the uh, entity framework and uh, other models it will be there that is from udemy and uh, we are trying to scaling the peoples on .NET Core. And after the .NET Core, again, there will be the one training, the Web API Analyzer, Web API versioning, how the security we have to achieve in .NET Core Web API, then uh, how to API testing needs to be done, uh, then how the versioning number should be there, how the error handling should be done in a uh, Web API. Again, the last one is how to create a custom controller, uh, custom login, uh, like a nlog or serilog in .NET Core. So thank you. Thank you for uh, joining this training. And uh, thank you for giving your time. Uh, nice to talk uh, with you people. If you have any doubt, you can uh, ask me. Because already we have over the time period, we have crossed the time limit. But I can give you the two to three minutes. Yeah. Uh, any question? One more thing. Um, yeah. I would be sharing the video with you all as well as KK. So yeah. we can, I mean, you all can go through the video once again if you want. And right okay. now, if you have any doubts, you can ask KK. And uh, later on also, I suppose, feel free to yeah. message him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Hangout, they can uh, chat me. Uh, and they can ask me on Hangout. And I will connect with these people. Oh, uh, these are the skilling group. And uh, again, uh, Priya, we are going to take many more trainings on uh, in .NET Core. This is for unit testing or uh, mm -hmm. other trainings also we are going to uh, start right. from the next. You Demi credentials I have already given to you, KK. So yeah. uh, please feel free to, you know, impart them with that. Uh, they can have the credentials and you can just guide them to, you know, go ahead yes, with yes. the training. Yes, yes. After this meeting in the second part, I will connect you Priya, for uh, again one or two trainings we require. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Okay. KK. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Priya. Thank you. All. Thank you, uh, Tapas, Adiba, Baluri. Yeah. Thank you, Akash, Akash. Both Akash, thank you for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 B